this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to deploy the GroupWise 2012 client using ZCM 11 SP1. I've downloaded and extracted the GroupWise files. They're on my XP admin box we use for managing my ZCM environment. So first thing we need to do is we need to go and create our GroupWise MST file. The MST file will be used in conjunction with the install files for customizing the install. So if I go to my local drive, I've got my GroupWise 2012 GroupWise folder here containing the uh, extracted GroupWise download from the website. If I go to my admin, utility, tools, we'll find our GroupWise tuner application, so the GW tuner application. So I'm going to run that. When I run that application, the first thing it asks for is the location of the client directory files. So I'm just going to browse to and again select my GroupWise 2012, GroupWise distribution directory, and the client folder, and just point to that folder. It now takes me through what would be the questions asked during the uh, client install. So here the install path, which is fine. The folder, should I want to have a folder group? We now have the option of not creating a folder group in the menu system. Do I want to add icons to the desktop? I'm going to deselect that one. I do not want those. I do not want anything on the quick launch bar. I do want the mail integration, so the browser mail, so the mail to. And here is a new option with GroupWise 2012 is to add icons to the start menu uh, with that program group under the program folder. So we do not want that. We want ZCM to control the application entirely, its locations and that. So we'll show you how to do that through the ZCM interface. So I'm going to click Next. It now asks for which language do I want to install the client in. So I pick the languages that I want from the languages. We notice that we do have a couple of new languages. We have uh, Slovak and Bulgarian has some new languages that we have for GroupWise 2012. So we're just going to select English and we're going to select Danish here. And select Next. Which one do I want as my default language? We'll select English and Next. Then it shows software integration. So we're going to deselect all of the software integrations. We do not want any software integrations for document management. And I select Finish. And that will create a GroupWise MST file in that client Win32 directory. So here it says the installer transform file has been created. And if I navigate up, we'll go to our client Win32 directory. And we'll see that we now have the GroupWise MST file that's been created for us. In order to use ZCM to distribute the GroupWise client, they've made some changes in some of the files that we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage the setup IP uh, environment that we have available to us. So let me navigate up again to our GroupWise admin utilities. There's the setup IP folder. And what we have here, the setup IP fill file is the complete client in a compressed format. What we now can do is we're going to leverage that file and use that file to upload to our content repository for ZCM as opposed to the entire client directory. So this now reduces the files to uh, about three or four files to the content repo at about 100 megabytes worth of data as opposed to having to upload uh, about 3,500 files and about 400 and 50 gigabytes worth of data. So it makes it a lot easier for the ZCM environment to replicate that information and distribute that information throughout the environment. So what we've done is we're going to leverage this compressed file here with all of the client files with this extract.bat file. So now we've given the ability to extract our client files from the setup IP fill files without actually running setup.exe. So what we're going to need here is we're going to need our extract.bat file, our setup IP fill file, and again, the language files that you're going to require, in this case, Danish and English, the .da, .en files. So that will extract the client files and the local um, language files for those only those two languages and not all of the languages. So we're going to leverage this during our installation. All right, so now we're ready to actually go ahead and create our bundle. So I'm going to launch the ZCC. I've already launched the ZCC and I'm logged into it. So now I want to create a bundle. So I select bundles in my applications. I've got folders here. I'm just going to create a new bundle at the root level here. So call it a bundle. It's a Windows bundle. And I'm going to leave it as an empty bundle because I'm going to configure several actions in it. So we'll leave it as an empty bundle. I'm going to call this 
GW 2012 in the bundles folder icon here what we've done is we're going to show you and I'm going to browse to again to the client directory so go to my computer exercises my group wise if I go to the client win32 directory typically you would go and select your groupwise.exe file. There are some issues right now at this point and a workaround for Ascot is that we've uh, provided a groupwise 12 ICO file and that actually allows us to grab the appropriate icon, the new icon with the envelope teal background with, within the white circle. The groupwise exe file for whatever reason I believe uh, I've been told that it has to do with the file sizes. So we're just going to choose our icon file, click OK, and we now have our icon available to us. I select next and um, now we've got the icon. I am going to create this as a sandbox version until I'm ready to publish this. Uh, ZCM 11 allows us this sandbox version so basically a test type of environment. So I'll create it as a sandbox until I'm ready to finally publish that out to my workstations. And I'll select finish and define some additional properties at the same time. So now, <clears throat> typical ZCM environment, I've got my, uh, looking at my bundle, I've got my bundle pages. Now I'm set on my actions. So the distribute action is really just set for pushing the files down to the ZCM cache on the machines, and that will happen. Uh, what I need to do is click on the install, and now we're going to create some install actions. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to create an install files action. Install files action will load files up to the content repo making them available to every Zen agent and then allowing them to be files distributed out to the workstation without having to worry about file rights and we're just going to change our name here. We're going to install files to a temporary install directory. Let's just give it a give it a label so we know what we're doing. So install files to a temporary directory. I'm going to add the files that I need. So the files that we need to get to the machine, again, I bring up the Select Files dialog box, click on Add, and add the files that I want to download. So here, I need to go to that Setup IP folder under the Admin, Utility, Setup IP. I'm going to pick my Extract.bat, my Danish and English language files, and the Setup IP file. So those are the four files that I'm going to copy. I'm going to select those. At this point, the Setup IP file is a compressed file. ZCM will store information in the content repo compressed, but since the file is already compressed, I'm going to say do not compress. Don't try to compress a compressed file. Click OK, and we'll see it's now telling me it's going to upload these files to the content repo under my uh, ZCM server. And I click OK, and it'll go through the process of those four files. It'll take uh, 10, 15 seconds or so to do that. Largest file, obviously, being the setupip.fill file, which is approximately uh, 98 megabytes or 100 megabytes of, of data. And there are four files are uploaded. It'll return in a second. So it tells me these are the files we're going to upload to the content repo. And it says, okay, where do you want to put them on the local machine? So here I'm going to put them to C colon backslash GW client. So that directory does not have to exist. It will create that directory uh, as it needs and push those files down. We're going to have an option of copy always, copy the files down. And I'm going to select OK. And here I have the option. So now, since I am pushing things down to the machine, I want to do things as a secure administrator or dynamic administrator. I can pick either one. Uh, that just allows the user to um, give full rights to the box in order to do that. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. Select OK. Uh, there are no system requirements at this point. Uh, I just need to copy those files, and I want to do that as somebody with administrative rights to the box. So I select OK. So we've got our first action. And now the next action we need to do is we need to actually extract those install files. So now my action that I want to do is a run script. So I'm going to run a script and the script that we have, again here it's asking for the script file to run. So we've now just copied in our GW client directory in the first action. We're now going to uh, run the extract dot bat file that we want and that's going to go ahead and extract all of the client install files 
in a subdirectory called Win32 under GW Client, and also the appropriate language files based on the setup uh, dot uh, language files that we have, the English and Danish that we have there. I want wait before proceeding to the next action. I really want this one to obviously to complete before we go to the next step. And the next step, we'll see that one in a second here, but I really want that to happen. I want to wait till it completely finishes extracting all of the files before moving forward. I'm going to change the name here, run, right? So run script to extract the installation files. Just give it a little more explanation. I'm going to select the advanced tab and again, here I do not want to do this as a logged in user because if the logged in user has no rights to the box, uh, he might not be able to run that. He might not have access. So we're going to again do that as dynamic administrator. And I'm going to select OK. So now I have two actions. Uh, now, once the files are extracted, we need to infuse the groupwise MST file that we created earlier. So here I'm going to add another action of install files. So again, we're going to copy a new file in. And again, under the general tab, I hit the add upload a file. I'm going to go and select my files. Again, in my Win32, I now have that groupwise MST file that we just created earlier. Select OK on that one. I, this one, I don't care if it's compressed. It's a 4K file. It's really small. Select OK. It will you know, ask you to upload that to the server. Select OK. And again, where do I want to copy this file? Destination C colon backslash GW client backslash win32. Again, we want to always copy that file in and select OK. Right? Again, I want to run this as dynamic administrator. Everything I want to do for the install, I want it to happen as administrator because we will need to have rights to write to the registry. So group-wise, I can change the name. Uh, let's just go and do that. So a little more explanatory, install files. Uh, let's just say you know, copy groupwise.mst for a custom install. All right, copy groupwise MST for a custom install. Great. Select OK. So now I've got my actions. And now the final action that we really need to do for the minimum to happen is to actually go ahead and run the installation. So I'm going to add a new action. And this action is to actually launch an executable. And this executable is the launch the install.bat executable. We've actually created install.bat file, and this batch file will go ahead and check for all of the dependencies, those being the Windows messaging client, the MSXML, the Office 2007. There's a, a series of the VC runtime, so it checks for a series of pre dependencies to see if they're already installed, and if they're not installed, we'll pre-install them, and then launch the install for the groupwise MSI. And then with this, we're going to add a couple of extra parameters. So in here, first thing I want to do is I need to say what's the command. So we're going to run our C colon GW client win32. And again, now we've got that install.bat file that was extracted from the setupip.fill file. Command line parameters. There are a couple of choices. We can use a slash unattended or slash silent. The slash unattended will allow us to not see any of the prerequisites, they would not show up, but we will see the groupwise MSI dialog box installing the groupwise client. So an unattended, you only see the groupwise MSI install, you do not see any of the, the prerequisites. Slash silent, you obviously see nothing at all happening. And it all happens in the background, so the user will not be prompted with any type of screen. Uh, we're actually going to use that one because we're going to leverage ZCM for the prompting uh, of the client. So I'm going to say slash silent. And now I need to add a couple of variables. So we're going to add a variable. And the variable, what it's going to allow us to do is, is to tell the groupwise MSI file where the transform file is or what the transform file is actually called. 